the Iowa Hawkeyes headed east to face their Big Ten West division foe, the Northwestern Wildcats, in the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. It was a game that harkened back to the days of playing old school slobber knockers smack dab in the middle of Grant Park Stadium a hundred years ago. Both teams struggled to get any sort of momentum going in the first half as their futile attempt at advancing the pointy pigskin were deterred by dastardly defenses. The Hawkeyes had a chance for a field goal, but the sphere slid wide, striking the upright with a disappointing yet distinguished doink. Both teams mired in the muck of the torn-up turf for the remainder of the first half with nothing to show for it but a scoreless tie at halftime. After halftime, the Hawkeyes forced a wildcat punt. They then pressured the punter and partially prevented the punt from proceeding on its pathway. Iowa immediately plopped on the pineapple and found themselves in prime position for points. Iowa insisted on inserting the pointy peanut into the end zone as they finally forcefully found a timely touchdown and a 7-0 lead. The Wildcats then wound their way down the turf, finding their way down to the one-yard line. The hard-nosed Hawkeyes held and kept the wily Wildcats out of the end zone on three straight plays from the one. However, the Hawkeyes couldn't clear it out from the shadows of the goalposts and were forced to punt. Northwestern's returner had a nifty punt return, placing the Wildcats back deep inside Hawkeyes' territory. This time, the Wildcats wheeled their way into the end zone to tie the tango at 7-7 with a minute 50 left in the game. Iowa was implored to act with impetus due to the tiny amount of time left on the ticker. The Hawkeyes' hill heaved to wide receiver Caleb Brown, who caught the ball for a 23-yard game with his first catch of the entire year. The Hawkeyes moved the ball slightly further up the field and set up for a 52-yard field goal for the win. The Hawkeyes kicker sweetly struck the sphere to split the uprights and sent the signal to put the other sideline to sleep. Iowa increased their win total to seven and walked out of Wrigley winners. Iowa 10, Northwestern 7. Welcome, everyone, to the Sickles Committee Podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of November 5th, 2023. We have fallen back. I am so tired. My brain has no clue what time it is. Joey, do you guys have, is this the same time you guys change clocks to? Everywhere but Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan's our Arizona. Fucking Saskatchewan, man. I've said that. <laughs> I've said that a dozen times. Fucking Saskatchewan. On the show, in fact. I have. <laughs> But Saskatchewan and Newfies fucking can't stand them. Let me tell you. Newfies, oh, you'll catch hell for that one. Newfies are weird, man. Great flag, great flag though. Love the pink and green on the flag. One of my favorites. <laughs> uh, as always, I'm Jordan. With me tonight is Kamish. We have guests Kevin and Joey. And there's it's, Arthur. It's Arthur popped dude- in in the middle. Arthur popped in on our intro. Hey, it's, Arthur. It's Dude's Day. It's Dude's Day. Oh God, there's there's way too many dudes on this podcast. This is oh, not, no. not. This is not how this podcast works. This, nope. <laughs> Kevin, how are you, sir? Uh, Jacksonville Armada is joining uh, MLS Next Pro in 2025. We're on to soccer season. We're not going to talk about things that occurred in the state of South Carolina recently. There you go. Joey, how are you? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm ignoring what's happening on Sunday Night Football right now. Um, <laughs> and my and the Hamilton Tiger Cats are eliminated from the playoffs, unfortunately. But other than that, I'm doing great. Kamish? Uh, let's see here. I got a laundry list of things that have uh, gone wrong this weekend, so it's it's not necessarily. You are, ba- you are batting like a zero at this point, dude. <laughs> yeah, my my AC gave out, uh, which is weird. You're like, okay, it's it's San Antonio. It, it can't be like that hot. Well, it got to like 85, so we kind of needed it. But then you know, the week before, it was like a low of like 38. So we had to go back and forth from like AC to heat within like one or two days of each other and and the motor blew so uh i don't have a motor in the ac it's currently like 78 in the house you know we got the windows open the lows only gonna get to like 66 60 uh, 60 uh, i'm sorry i think like 62 so yeah it's it's been a mess um you're also, also you're also in a windowless closet at the moment so. i'm in a windowless closet right now um so it, it's it's a little warm a little toasty so i'm gonna have a lot of hot takes uh but then from there, I I woke up. I had a dream that 
somebody slapped me in the eye with a pancake. Yeah. Like a giant comically large pancake. And then I woke up and my right eye was swollen. So I swear you had <laughs> to have done something in your sleep. I, I don't know. Then if, you had the dream about the pancake. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Maybe there was like a mosquito because we had like the windows open or something like that. And it was on my eye and I smacked myself in the middle of sleep, but it's been a rough one. Um, and then like, you know, I'm trying to like with a compress on my eye, trying to tweet games <laughs> like misspelling words and i was like I, and I have like a baby that's teething in the other hand and i'm like i'm just it's just it's been a rough weekend but uh the commission's still going we're, we're still here we're still standing i am off tomorrow uh of work so that's always good no no real job so I, i'm good no real job on monday you simulated what a concussion is like yeah, yeah seems that way uh, we're gonna start tonight with our top news of the evening you're a mean one, Mr. Grink. I believe the proper term is three words that best describe you are, and I quote, stink, stank, stunk. Alex Grinch is out at USC as defensive coordinator after his defense gave up 572 yards to Washington. And uh, USC's odd offense gained 515 that game. Rest in peace to my best engagement bait post every week, which is whenever the whenever USC's defense sucked, I just posted was the Grink there and got the account a million retweets. Exactly. To have Alex Grinch and Brian Ferentz get shit canned within a week of each other feels feels too too beautiful. It feels too appropriate. I'm surprised it took this to get Alex Grinch out at USC, but Better late than never, Trojan fans. I feel like this is the correct move for y'all because other I mean, once again, you you have created a beautiful half of a team. You have this beautiful offense led by a Heisman Trophy winner, and then a defense that plays like a sieve. And I just think that when Alex Grinch and Brian Ferentz go to Nick Saban's school for special boys, there's going to have to be a lot of relearning. I, I'm still laughing at the the quote. Uh, it was the commentary. Was it Chris Fowler that said that Alex Grinch's defense was the bend, but then and break? break defense? Yes, it was Fowler. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, my God, yeah, that was probably the last draw. I think that was it. It's just like nearly 600 yards of, of offense given up to to Washington, and it wasn't like through the air. No, 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 it was all over the place. <laughs> Like, they had a running back that had 199 yards rushing before, before contact. Before contact. Before contact. Yeah. That, is that bad? I don't know. I don't, that's an advanced stat. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> not good. It's not good. I also want to say that in this game, USC-Washington, we'll talk a little more about it later, but their point total together was 94 points. The entire Big Ten West... All seven teams scored 114 mm -hmm. this weekend. I cannot Count wait it. for the water and oil combination here next season. And I love that in our comments, we get two kinds of people. The first comment is we're going to, you know, oh my God, they're going to come in. They're going to fucking smoke those, smoke those Midwest teams, blah, blah, blah. And then the other half is like, well, they're probably going to learn what defense is like. You know what, y'all? <laughs> I don't care. I'm just hoping for craziness. That's all that, I care about. That, that's all we care about here. It's I just, I, we had a, such a missed opportunity. We were like just a couple more bad decisions away from Iowa, Iowa offense versus USC defense. In, yes. In the bowl that, game. that could have been, that could have been a Rose bowl. That should have been a Rose bowl. Someone, someone suggested a USC, Oklahoma, Alamo bowl. And that just makes me tingle to like my core. Even if I don't get pressed for that, I might just show up for that. Because that is that is the most... Oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. I think, I think by birthright, we get the broadcasting rights. I, I feel like we have to. <laughs> I feel like we have to. Uh, Kamish, how did your Sabertooth Tigers do? Oh, yeah. All right. So it's our second to last game in the... the the crazy YMCA youth soccer league, six-year-old. Uh, we, we played the Wolverines. 
Uh oh. And I was like, Uh-oh. I was like, okay, you know, is this like an auto generated name? You know, and they just didn't change the name, or did they change the name to the Wolverines because they were Michigan fans? And by the first second or so of the game, I'm like, they're Michigan fans. Uh, <laughs> it was just like, it was just done. They were the the coach was rules lawyering. Oh God, a six year old youth soccer game. <laughs> like. Like what rules was he counting? Look, look, they're trying to do free kicks. He's like, he's right next to the ref. Cause we have like, uh, we have like a, this is a YMCA staffer that has a whistle. And I mean, we all have whistles, whatever, but like they, they're the, the clock keeper. And then, you know, he's right next to us. Like, Oh, this kid like hit a kid with an elbow free kick. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It's calling free, calling free kicks now. Come on! Uh, it was like handball free kick. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding me? So I'm like, I I'm in for this. And then so the parents of of my team are just like, oh, okay. So we're gonna rules lawyer this game. And I'm like, this is this is ridiculous. The parents for the other team must have been all Michigan fans too, because they were rules lawyering along with the coach. Uh, this this feels like a Notre Dame fandom too, but this, yeah, go ahead. This was like I was not going to say anything. No, this is cops as shit. Yeah. This, was yeah. was Connor Stallions at any of your previous games? I I'm, I'm not sure. There there could have been some sign stealing, uh, because they had worked the throw ins to perfection, and they were throwing the throw ins, uh, but you know they they, you know they violated. They had two goals taken off of the board by the referee. So two of the goals that the Wolverines scored were taken off of the goal. Uh, one was that they they kicked it through the side, which I clearly saw. It was through the side. It didn't go. They doesn't have nets in the side. We had the nets, but they kicked it off and they kicked it through the side. <laughs> so they did that. Then he was mad because we had a goalie. We had one kid who just liked to hang back and be the yeah. goalie, just yeah. just there. And so he's like, "No, you can't have a goalie." And then, and then what he does immediately at the start of it, he puts a goalie. So I'm just like, like what the hell, man? I don't care. It was a great game. We we won again. You know, not my, that you keep, not that there's, you keep scorekeeping. I don't. I don't care. Now when we care, we we won this one. I think we won it four uh, three. Um, you know, they went up a little bit, but they had a couple of goals disallowed, which was like the ref had to disallow them. Like, and the other guy's like, they should count it. I'm like, no, he did this. And so the ref was, it was just arguing with a youth soccer ref for a YMCA game. It was ridiculous. I think um, you were playing against a wrestling heel. I mean, yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. The, the one thing that I love the most is that the, we played like kind of like in a plastic hockey rink style of things. It's so like it's like the, almost yeah. there's like there's like plastic mini boards, football, so to speak. So there's boards behind that, so the ball doesn't go out behind the goal or anything like that. It just goes up against the wall. My kids, you know, stopped like playing against the wall, and they just like held the ball against the wall, and then we got free kicks. They started the you want to play free kicks. My kids figured it out. Fine, we'll get a free kick. We'll just stop the ball against the wall, and then you have to get away from us. And let us have a free kick. But the coaching finally paid off. One kid went to the corner. Another one, like, sat right in front of the goal, trailed him, and he centered it and, like, went right in there, right in the goal. Game winner. I was like, coaching paid off. Victoria Sabretooth Tigers. Uh, one more win, and we're bowl eligible. <laughs> nice. There you go. Rats, <laughs> coach. Uh, Joey. Why don't you update us on some CFL playoffs? Yes, as I mentioned at the top, my beloved Hamilton Tiger Cats were eliminated in not very ceremonial fashion uh, against no, they the got, Montreal. They always Montreal drub, drub their asses. It was like it wasn't even like we we got like run out of the building. It was just like they took a lead and then we never came close. Yeah, it ended up being twenty seven twelve. Like I can't even remember things that happened in this game other than the fact the first score was a rouge. Yeah, I remember then, I saw that. Yep. That was nice. And then we started chasing touchdown chasing their touchdowns with field goals. I think we kicked four field goals this game. That's how we ended up with 12. It was uh it was not it was not fun. What was fun though was the uh for a while the BC Calgary game because um Vernon Adams Jr. was absolutely yeah. balling out. He was on fire. Yes, he was. 
uh, five all-purpose touchdowns, two passing, three rushing. I might have that flipped. Um, it was a very good evening for Oregon, basically. Yes. Across the board. I did see, uh, so BC ended up winning 41-30. They'll get Winnipeg next week. That was that game wasn't going to be in doubt. BC's 13-6, and six, Calgary's 6-13. and 13. Um, Only the playoffs, but, maybe. The, yeah. the, the, what was it? A Saskatchewan team has always been in the playoffs or something like that, whatever that random ass stat was. Yes, yeah, I forget the exact stat, but Saskatchewan had a, I think, five-game lead on Calgary and blew it with six weeks left. It was yep. absolutely insane. Vernon Adams Jr. did a interview after the game, uh, and they because he's not he's I mean he's a dual threat kind of passer, but he doesn't run a ton in the CFL just by virtue of that's not what the plays act call for. Ran a lot against Calgary, and uh, they asked him, "Hey, what why?" Why'd you take off more? Why'd you scramble more? And he just said, oh, my dad's in the crowd and he wanted me to. There you go. So I think some saber-toothed tiger. Um, That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Next week will be fun. Uh, Winnipeg, BC, Toronto, Montreal. Both of them are always pretty fun games. That was basically like what, if you asked me who was going to be in the final, like the the semi, like that was going to be it Mm -hmm. from months ago. This was going to be BC, Winnipeg, and Montreal, Toronto. Uh, yeah, BC looks kind of shaky for a minute. That was it. Yeah, basically. Should be good. And then... Uh, Grey Cup in Hamilton in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and I hear that you're going to be at that Grey Cup. I I still haven't heard officially from the league, but uh, I'm going to make as much of an effort to go as possible. It's not too far from where I am, where I'm living right now. So I, my, the last Grey Cup I went to was the 100th Grey Cup in Toronto. And uh, the halftime show for that one was a uh, peak of his hated powers, Justin Bieber, uh, peak, peak underrated Carly Rae Jepsen, and a Canadian underrated band named Mariana's Trench. And I distinctly remember Justin Bieber got booed out of the building. Well, this year, y'all got, you guys got Green Day, so I feel like that's even... I mean, that'd, uh, maybe... that'd be great. <laughs> it should be interesting. I this, is, this speaks to me being like, well, I own Dookie. That was a great album. And I'm old. I like Green have, Day have, back in the day. Have you heard their? I fr- I don't know if it's their latest album. I believe it's called uh, "Father of All Motherfuckers." No, I've I, I have it's, the it's last Green Day album I listened to in its entirety. I think was "American Idiot." I'm stuck back in like my cup, my college days. I I went. I listened to it because someone told me it was bad, and they were right. There you go. Good to know. So let's back up a little bit. Let's rewind it to Wednesday night. We had some action going on. First one was Bowling Green 24, Ball State 21. Kamish, Bowling Green is your team. You like yes. them a lot. Yeah, Why I mean, do you like them so much? They're, they're the best. Uh, they're, can, again, can be more specific. No, they're awesome. No, They're the only Falcons that a Saints fan could love. Is it because yeah. they're orange? Because they're in Browns colors. <laughs> they're in Browns colors. The disrespect to Air Force right now. Oh, shit. That's right. I'm a hey, my grandfather Navy, so I, I gotta lean oh, okay. that way. Saints Sorry. fans oh. hate the troops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotta lean Navy. Sorry, it's okay. Someone, uh, <laughs> someone else hated the troops. Too. It's fine. Yeah. But yeah, uh, no, the the Bowling Green. Whenever they play, there's just turnovers, either by Bowling Green or by the team that they're playing against. So they have forced 22 turnovers, and Bowling Green has turned the ball over 16 times themselves. It's, it's in, there's no it, one's it's, no one's even close to those numbers. <laughs> Nobody's close to either one of those numbers. No, it's it's insane <laughs> how 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 like crazy turnover prone they are. But they're also good. It's not like they're just good at losing it. They're good at getting it too. It's yes, it's insane. It, it's it's a lot of it's ridiculous. Me playing Madden. Yes. Yeah. It's like hit, it's like hitting strip sack. Like just jam. Oh my god. It's it's I, the NCAA with that linebacker that just jumps seven thousand feet in the air to intercept yep. the pass over the middle. You don't know how that happens, but no, that's that's Bowling Green. Like each one of the games, it's it's ridiculous. They did that to Georgia Tech, uh, and, and they got like so many turnovers against Georgia Tech, uh, and and they didn't turn the ball over. But but like against Miami of Ohio, they turned the ball over a ton. Uh, again, this is what they did. This is Ball State Bowling Green, uh, fantastic, thrilling action game ridiculous a lot of fun bowling green gets a field goal for the lead ball state gets in position for like a 50 some odd yard field goal to tie it falls short uh as the clock expires and 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 bowling green is one win away from from bowl eligibility again back-to-back years 
But the real banger game that night, I'm sorry to tell you this, was Kent State Akron. We flagged this one. Everyone gave a shit. It's two one and seven teams. Y'all, this game was so damn good. <laughs> Kent State looked like they were going to just put Akron in the ground. And then Akron had a 21 point fourth quarter to win it. And the undercuffler shows up. He leads them to victory. They run the wagon wheel. Shout out to Black Squirrel in our Discord, big Kent State fan. He got the video of the last play from the end zone where the wagon wheel was. Got the video of the last play and then got the shot of all the Akron guys running over, sliding into the wheel and lifting it up like it was the fucking Stanley Cup. It was great. I I mean, it sucks for him because he's a Kent State fan. So he had to witness that. So just being just a good enough fan, like, like, oh no, like he, he could sense it was coming. Like as soon as Akron got the touchdown to make it 27, 17, he's like, oh no, please no. And then it was 20, 27, 24. And then the undercuffler calls his own number on the read option God. and scoots into the end zone to take the lead. Play the video, please. Oh, well, play it right now i i gotta hear this so many different times because so I, I love this audio it is so good i i had to write about this game i had to do the old-timey voice just because of this this clip let's go go folks it, baby. Point, by the way reminder that the undercuffler came to our attention long ago last year yes he was a when he was he got a personal foul called on him from the sideline he got it he got Two unsportsman he, right. like conducts called from him on the sideline while he was just- wearing a headset, and this led, I think, it was against Ball State. It led to Akron having to go for two from from the Ball State forty eight. That's right. Yeah, they had to throw a two point conversion hail mary. It was it was so yes. Bad. The legend of the undercuffler, the um, undercuffler. That's right, the undercuffler, the Mac offensive player of the week, Jeff. Undercuffler. And and Joe Moorhead, Akron coach, shouts us out in the one most wonderful way possible. <laughs> at the game at the end of the press conference, I linked uh somebody posted it on our Reddit. So it's it's if you click on that, I don't know if the video will yeah, here, will me, pop up. Yeah, here let me get it. Yeah, when it was twenty five seconds left and the ball on the minus forty, I'm thinking, man, no. No, like Sports Center, like Sicko's Committee, like highlight stuff that's gonna like jam us up here. <laughs> Two institutions of equal prestige. Yeah, I was oh say. my god, that's amazing! That's amazing, Joe Moorhead. We love you. Thank you, sir. Joe Moorhead. Joe Moorhead. After after Kent State was up like twenty one zero, whatever it was, Kent State was way up. Joe Moorhead was just looking cold and miserable, like he was regretting every choice they got to that point. But he, was I, like, oh, this, he looks I, like Ohio Santa. Like, but, but remember that dude. That dude was Ohio Mississippi Krampus. State's head yes. coach. Yes. Like, like that. It looks like like he had the face of what the fuck happened to me that I'm sitting here coaching Akron one and seven Akron at this game. By the end, he was like fucking wagon wheel baby. Apparently, Akron has like wagon wheel. Like part of their practice is called the wheel, and like that's you know we really have to get into it. This is their thing. So I, I like that the- uh, he he appears to have the uh, the mindset of the only thing that you can't do is be the main character on Twitter. Like he's like, I will not have anything posted about this team on on Sports Center or the Sickos Committee. That is the only thing I'm trying not to do in this game. I don't care if we you know go what that's two and ten. That's that's once again like we're at this thing of yeah you may go to you may go two and ten this season. But you won your rivalry game. You got your trophy. Mm-hmm. And and again, it's Akron. I don't think they're going to fire you for 2-10. and 10. No, They had Con- CFP ambitions. Congrats, Akron. That was great. That was great. great again, game. this is what we love. Like, it's two 1-7 and seven teams. Yes. It's a rivalry game. It's it's action. It's just kind of what we want to highlight. And this is a little bit of our, 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 I guess, mantra, so to speak. But, like, all these games still matter. Just because it's not a top this, 20. This would matter a This would matter this a matter a ton. This is the first time they got the wheel in like over five years. It's yeah, yeah. None of none of the current Akron players had ever touched the wheel before. 
That's awesome. And then they they run off with that's amazing. Thursday night, Texas Tech 35, TCU 28, tortillas to blot out the sun. When they first got on the field, man, those tortillas went fucking flying. It was, it was great. great. So oh, didn't we so talk good. to a Texas Tech like person saying that like someone was like, oh, they're wasting food only in America. And I'm like, I think it, they're expired. They they're kind of stale. Yeah, they're 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 old and they're and stale. They're I've old and that. they're stale because the stale ones they fly, fly better, better. I think you know I. I've also heard that you you have to cut a hole in the middle of so. them. You get more distance if you yes, cut a hole in the middle I of them. So. I know. So, um, no one but, say Texas Tech isn't an engineering. But, school. but fuck all of this. I don't want to talk no. about this shit. I want to talk about the possum. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> I want to talk about the goddamn possum. The possum, which ran on the field, got 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 hooked. The Texas Tech president goes and pets the possum, and then fucking Fox decides to Fox copyright, copyright strike strikes the prime every, possum. Every possum video. <laughs> the only place you can get the possum is from Fox. Other possums are illegitimate. Illegal possum. Sure. And we were, man, we were cracking jokes about the possum. The whole internet was cracking yeah. jokes about the possum for like two hours. The game, whatever. Texas Tech won. Sure. It was actually close at the end. It was fun. Yeah. Fine. Whatever. No one cares. We're just like, just, just it was, possum it was just jokes like, all night long. It was great. Oh, it was like, oh, me dragging my kid off the playground. Oh, you know, uh, I, I took a picture of the, I, I zoomed in on the, uh, on the Texas Tech president, like scratching the possum's head. And I was like, what happens when an intro, when an intro, uh, introvert gets a surprise hug? Like, perfect. Just jokes everywhere. The jokes fucking wrote themselves. I had friends who don't watch football and didn't, don't know anything about us or the Sigos committee. Send, uh, send me our tweet <laughs> of, about that the happens. possum. That was great. That happens. Because they, because it was. It's so perfect. It's such a cute little guy. And not the first time Texas Tech has dealt with animal control. Nope. They had a fox a couple years ago. They consistently have a fox. Like it I, lives and, in the stadium. And I it has appeared multiple times. And I guarantee you they've had bat problems out of oh, tech. Because every place oh, in Texas yeah. has bat problems. That's right. I mean, hell, the fucking uh, San Antonio Spurs crazy ass coyote mascot has caught caught a bat before. <laughs> He's caught two bats. Yes. That's okay. Also that night on Friday, we had Troy 28, South Alabama 10 in the battle for the belt. I made the analogy that Troy's like a lawnmower that takes a bunch of pools to start, but you don't throw it away because once it gets like going, it's going to just work and it's great. Troy always takes a couple of pools to get started, but now they're seven and two, four and one in the Sun Belt, and it looks like they're going to run over everything that's left. Troy is just very good at this thing. So, so belt Troy is-, is a diesel engine. Okay, another oh, yeah. a diesel it's in the Sun Belt. It's perfect. Started. Yeah, and and and, and that also was Thursday, the game- by the way. Oh, it was Thursday. My bad. Thursday. The other one on Thursday that was like this one didn't get quite as much love. This was Duke Quake Forest. Uh, Duke ends up winning this one twenty four to 20, 24 to twenty one without much of anything left on their team. Like they're down to fumes on every side of the ball. They're just so incredibly yeah. hurt right now. But they end up beating Wake, and this makes Duke bowl eligible, which for Duke is, I mean, I know it's not what you thought was going to happen once you beat you know, Clemson week one, Duke, but this is still very good. Yeah, they're they're banged up. I'm sure they're not necessarily like very deep or whatever, but really. that's I mean, that's, that's yeah, the problem. I like, mean, it's just, just they don't have the, the depth, uh, but they were able to gut out the win here. I, I kind of feel bad for Wake Forest because they had a turnover at the end, uh, and then that led to Duke's field goal walk-off winner. Um, so sucks for wake maybe you know wake needs two more for bowl eligibility duke got there uh banged up which is is great and um everybody's making an elko somewhere rumors now so i i don't know wake would have to win two of nc state on the cw nope. at notre dame nope. or at syracuse they get one of those syracuse yeah i don't think they're gonna get two yeah that's gonna be tough syracuse isn't good unfortunately on Friday night, Dartmouth 23, Princeton 21. Get fucked, Princeton. I realized during the game, I was wondering, I remember all of our games being nooners. I couldn't remember when I was in college. I couldn't remember why. We never had a night game. I realized they didn't put lights until 2011. <laughs> I graduated in 06. So we just didn't have late night games because we had no lights. And that makes total sense. Yeah, I can see why you didn't have night games. Because when you would kick a field goal on one side of the field, it was just pitch black. Dark as <laughs> shit. Black. It's, Dark like, as it's shit. like a building there. 
And it's just like, I, I, I wouldn't go near that building at night. No, that I like, I, I have, I have never seen more darkness because it's so in the middle of nowhere that when it's dark, it's real fucking dark. Like it, that just always blows my mind. I forget that until I go back up there. Also that evening, Boston College 17, Syracuse 10. Syracuse is busted. Four and four and oh to four and five. We have we have done this again, Syracuse. Oh. We do the dance. Dino, the writing is on the wall, I'm afraid. And I feel like I don't know who's going to do any better at Syracuse. I know Dino's going to go on to great things because I love the way he coaches. It's a lot of fun. I just don't think it's the match for upstate New York right now. And I couldn't tell you who the fuck is the match for upstate New York right now. What's Fordham's coach want to, what does Fordham's coach want to do? I don't know. Towson. No, that's not upstate. No, but I'd be... uh, the other game that night was our Mountain West showdown. Wyoming 24, Colorado State 15. Wyoming wins the boot and the border, border war, and I love to see it. I have not run the debt in numbers this, yet this week, but Colorado State's quarterback, Braden Fowler Nicolo, Nicolosi, always mess that up, went 24 for 42 for 220 yards, two TDs, and two interceptions. Mwah. He even palindromed his completion attempts. He did. Like, this guy it is, is beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. putting in overtime to be on this list. Mm-hmm. This is one of my favorite rivalries. It was in Wyoming. The wind was blowing weird. It looked cold as hell. The best was our friend Roger Sherman was there wearing a giant fucking cowboy hat, looking like Norm MacDonald playing Burt Reynolds on Celebrity Jeopardy yeah. and claiming he could blend well, in. Well, I mean, like he was in, with, he was in the was, blimp watching Akron and Kent State. That was also great. He was, he was in the, he was in the blimp shitter. Yeah, in the bathroom. He was in the, <laughs> yeah. bathroom. He was in the blimp's shitter looking I, down at yeah. the game. I was genuinely surprised the bathroom had a had a scenic view I, like that. I know. I've I okay. I I've taken some scenic poops before. My favorite has been uh, at my oh, when I was in Paris. My, my my family my my wife's family has this beautiful like they have like an apartment in Paris and the apartment upstairs the bathroom looks over the Eiffel Tower. It's great, but I still think this is better. Okay, this is nice. To- Kamish, what's your what's your most scenic <laughs> poop? Here we go. <laughs> Let's round table it. I took a piss overlooking it's, the cast of Capital One. I can cut this. No, you're not. Do not cut this. Do not cut this topic. Oh my god. Scenic poops. Oh Fine. Y'all are no fun. Let's go to Saturday. Well, I think we picked the game of the week, correct? Yeah. Iowa at Northwestern, 230 on the Peacock. I got a Peacock trial for this. I didn't have Peacock before this. Okay. So I got a Peacock trial yeah. for this. Didn't watch Five Night at Freddy's like I suggested I did. <laughs> God, like every commercial. I, I, I want to know what what went through what went through their uh, the algorithm for that. Like, if you like horrifying yet somewhat comedic events like Iowa Northwestern, yeah. enjoy enjoy a horror movie. We almost had an immaculate first half, where it's only puns until the end of half. However, there was a missed field goal and an interception that messed that. It, it was it was it a was so close. Field goal. It was a toy. Yeah, that that makes it pretty good. This was also, I believe Northwestern had twenty nine yards total going into the half. That's the kind of game it was. I had a great time watching this game. I watched oh, yeah. this game. I watched this game kick to kick. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I unfortunately took a, a very risky alternative over under, which horrifyingly broke at the last second. I took under 15.5 and I tried to diamond hands it. I, I bet three, six, five sent me an email saying, would you like to cash out for 60 for $60 after I put $10 on it? And I went, no, I'm going to see this through. God, I know when to push the eject <laughs> button. That's for, that's for all the, uh, the crypto scams in our replies. I now feel some kinship. <laughs> Not only did Northwestern have 29 yards in the first half, the teams combined for 110. Like, this was just stuck in neutral. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. I, I, somebody said on our Instagram, our Sickos Committee Instagram, which is just at Sickos Committee, um, they said that, you know, you guys went with the mainstream Sickos Committee game of the week. And I'm like, yeah. 
and somebody said that that Iowa is our Alabama. <laughs> like so, basically, you know, Iowa. You know what? Iowa's sometimes Alabama's I, number one. Hmm? Sometimes Alabama's I, just number you one. You know, it just happens. You know, like uh, Alabama, like to the CFP is Iowa to the Chicago Committee. Is that one of those like standardized tests? Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, it, it's your analogy. But it is. It lived up to the sickos hype. It, it was ridiculous. Scoreless first half. A, an amazing scoreless first half. Score scoreless implies they were trying to score. I didn't see there any of that. There was a missed field goal. There, there was that interception in the there end zone. There was a missed field that goal. Was, that was that was a, that was a dagger. Yeah, the yes. interception in the end zone. You know, there was two. They tried. It didn't work out, but they tried. Iowa tried. Iowa um, tried. I you know Northwestern, and then the the field falling apart. Uh, was just amazing. Oh, the giant yeah. hole? I feel yeah. like that was like right on like the third baseline or something when they were trying to do the tush push. Like the walk, and they, they got stuffed on like three plays from the one yard line. Mm-hmm. The, the, the crazy thing about the hole was that I first saw it, I was like, oh, like a little bit, like a little divot. But then I looked again, it was a, it was a fucking hole. It was a crater. Yeah. Like someone's going to snap an I'm glad nobody got thing. hurt, but yikes. Yeah, Yes. Not to yeah. stop an angle. Someone's going to disappear into that thing. Maybe maybe we need to... St- okay, I love football at baseball stadiums. You know I do, guys. But maybe for the health of people, we need to stop doing this thing. Because every Anti- time we do this... ghost committee mindset. I, Revisionist. Hey. Like... Like last hey. year's spin, like was it was, was it wasn't the Fenway Bowl. It was the, it was the Yankee. It had to have been the Pinstripe Bowl. It had the same issue. How about... Like giant how about scenes. This? Lay AstroTurf in the baseball stadium for the game and then just pick it up after love it literal astroturf right. the carpet do it mm-hmm. maybe we need to expand a little bit maybe we need to have bowl games at basketball courts <clears throat> aircraft yeah. carrier i mean there was that that one in atlantic city in yes. like a yes, ballroom that was... <laughs> the one that was played on, on when it was playing sodom Burlap Burlap Sacks, yeah. yes the boardwalk bowl uh yes the the one that we i think we talked about on one of our podcasts the like very beginning podcast so yeah that's what we had we had we, we, had, the, we had the dude we had the dude in our replies it was like i played on that that, that i was in that game it, it was, was awful, awful. <laughs> it was like it was like hitting concrete it was, it was ridiculous so let me let me do some stats we I, talked I about think, playing i think finnish college football plays seven on seven in basketball gyms oh i think God. that's true love it arena oh, sure. finnish basketball so let me just do some things uh, to clean up some stats here so uh, some fun Work things yeah. from the Sickos game of the week. Iowa has had seven games in the past two seasons with over-unders of 35 and lower. All seven have gone under. Next week is going to be funny because they started it at 28 and a half with Rutgers. We'll talk about that on the next show, of course. The highest scoring games at Wrigley Field this year. The Cubs versus Reds was Cubs 20, Reds 9. Cubs versus Mariners, Cubs 14, Mariners 9. Uh, Cubs versus Reds again. Cubs sixteen, Reds six. Those were back to back days. Back to back days. Then you had the Cubs versus Nationals. Cubs seventeen, Nationals three. Uh, the one that I, I really angered a lot of people with is when I mentioned that it was the Pirates thirteen, Cubs seven. Wait, September Pirates yes. did this? And this wasn't this wasn't like no, May Pirates. This was like ruin the Cubs playoff chances, Pirates. Uh, like just just doing this, they they, and so I made the tweet. I was like, the Pirates outscored Iowa at at Wrigley, and you know somebody in our mentions was like, well, so did fucking if what about fucking Northwestern? I'm like, well, that's kind of implied because Iowa had more points than Northwestern. <laughs> but I did a I did a tweet after that. I was like, it, also the Pirates scored more than Northwestern. There you go. Hey, Good yeah. They just wanted. They just wanted to be reminded that they won that game. That was just a fan looking for some compliments. I know. That's that, that's what they're looking for. Um, one other thing from this one before we move on to the next game, on the Big Ten Network preview show, uh, the former LSU and Indiana head coach Jerry Donardo, he had to come out with a bold prediction, and his bold prediction for this game. It was Iowa and Northwestern will combine for 63 plus points. In what? Oh my God. That was his bold prediction. In fucking world. Um, and I, I typed in like Jerry uh, DiNardo in the search bar. And then I, I, I found out that he followed us. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Some people are just trying to get noticed. Shout by out, us at this shout point. out, That's Jerry. You want our attention, <laughs> uh, uh, Jerry? I, I saw your LSU coach teams play in person many, many times. Shout out, Jerry. Um, give it <laughs> that. That was the definition of bold prediction, right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Georgia Tech forty-five, Virginia seventeen on the CW. This fucked up Georgia Tech's pattern. But is the CW stronger than the pattern? Did they already have a bye week? Maybe that played into it? I don't, I don't they know. They have. Okay. So, yeah, no, that's. They got back to back wins now. So, I don't know if this messes up the pattern. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what this is. Does this bode well or poorly for their Georgia game? So, they're at Clemson next week, then host Syracuse, and then, and then Georgia at the end. So, they could still go loss, win, loss. Maybe just the pattern's resetting itself. Yeah, shout out to Westcore in the Discord for reacting with, I really don't know how to handle an odd week win. Yeah. Especially one that was this that was this dominant. Haynes King, once again, fucking great quarterback. I don't know what Andy mm-hmm. was doing to that poor boy, but he's doing great at tech. I want to congratulate Oklahoma State bedlam, bedlam, on their twentieth win bedlam. in the Bedlam series. Hit 2-0, baby. How many times have they faced off? 118. But we're at win 20, folks. They did it. They did it. I was actually looking, uh, and I someone helped me with this. I forget what the I forget what the actual totals were. Because Oklahoma's won this game 91 times, yes. I believe. And I was trying to see if there's any team that's won, beat another team 100 times. And there's some close ones. Harvard and Brown are close, I think. They're like 90-something. But I I I'm, I want to find a hundredth loss in a, in a rivalry series. Anyways, this was the first time Oklahoma State has won back to back games in Stillwater since the days of Pappy. our favorite Pappy. coach, Pappy, Pappy Waldorf. Waldorf. Pappy, a man that could be considered to be the best head coach at like four different schools. I put that today, and everyone was like, "Well, he's probably the second best at Cal, and maybe the maybe the second best at Northwestern." Shut but up, he nerds. Pappy Waldorf's awesome. He did this all like smoking cigarettes and basically giving his players amphetamines to survive. Pepe. 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 Pepe, Pepe Waldorf. Uh, this also, Oklahoma State fans not only took the goalpost down, they fucking snapped That's them. right. Very rarely nowadays do you see that. That, that, that got snapped. And like people almost got smacked when they failed out. Like, yes. I, I'm glad nobody got smacked Could, there. If, if, if you guys don't know, like these, these things are bolted down. And so a lot of times if it looks like it's coming down, like they'll they'll pull the bolts to stop this from happening. But they they literally just wiggled and waggled this piece of metal till it There's snapped a video off in the wrong. in the chat in the Sickos uh, committee podcast, no context images chat while we record. There's one there of like just basically nearly falling on people while it collapsed. Oh yeah, like oh yeah, it almost just like there were people on it, there were people under it. Yeah, I saw the video of that thing come down, and I'm amazed that we don't know of any serious injuries that happened. And cause... with all this happening, what does the DJ at Oklahoma State do over the PA system? They're jamming Taylor Swift's We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. <laughs> Goddamn. So good. And this is how the, the like, if the rivalry is not going to be played again for a while, this is how you want to end it because. Oklahoma State going like, I don't need this shit anymore is totally fine. But now you can't let them have the last win. So like out of spite, this is what happens. Texas won the last win. Uh, Texas won the last AM game as they were going out of the conference yes, too. Justin so Tucker. If someone's leaving. You might as well kick them on the ass on the way out. This was, this <laughs> was great. God, this was a good game. It was so much fun. And, and Oklahoma fans are so pissed off about this game. Because there was a call that was probably pass interference. Questionable. It was probably pass interference. Hey, if, if, really if, just... if anybody can understand Oklahoma fans, I can know, I, I can empathize with you when there is a clear pass interference that is not called. It's me, the Saints fan. So I understand what you're going through, Oklahoma fans. I understand. It sucks. Sorry. This I can't was, do anything about it, though. So much fun. God, this was so much fun. Congrats, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma. 
uh, the the shirts. I forget who posted the shirt. It was so much. It was a Pistol Pete shirt with underneath that said, "Well, okay," and that's great. Well, what about the uh, the half jersey that was uh, it was the Sooners Cowboys that said the Zoom Zoom Boys? Boys. I love that too. <laughs> But I, way better than Nerv Noir. Nerv Noir. The Soon Boys. The Soon That's even Boys. Better. Army 23, Air Force 3. Air Force, what the fuck did you do? All, all, I, all no. I gotta say is shit happens. Did you see how many turnovers Air Force had? Six. Shit happens. Six. Four fumbles, two interceptions. Our, our beautiful boy that hadn't thrown an interception all goddamn year. All of a sudden, just vomits up turnovers. So, so this was a shit game. Army uh, it was a shit Army win. got a shit win out of this one. They scored all 23 of their points in the first half. Let me just go over it. I was going to say, did we want to explain that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll go. Yeah, exactly right. right. So they, they scored all their points in the first half. So the, what we have is, is the second half ineptitude tracker. Uh, the abbreviation is, is shit. Uh, basically, it means... It, we're looking for teams that are able to score all their points in the first half and somehow win. And Army did it. So that was another one we've had. Is that was that our thirteenth shit win of the season? Uh, no, okay, more than that. I don't know how many. Fifteenth shit win of the season. Fifteenth right. shit win. Yes, and actually, we had uh, we had twelve shit games this yeah, weekend. By and the way, only one. But not. But the only one That's that right. won. Was I just Army. want to go over Air Force's. Um, Drives in the first half. Please, please this, do. Their drives please in the first half. Uh, they they ended on downs, and then they fumbled, fumbled downs, field goal, interception. This was the nightmare. This was. I, I think the guys in the full cast said it best. Where it was like, you know, that what they run is a ton of fun until all those pitches just stop working, and sometimes the pitches just don't work anymore, and you just hit people. Oops, we're playing against the team that exclusively practices against, practices against the option. Oops. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that's it too. And this is, this army team is ass. And they, oh my they God. They lost to UMass. And. Yeah. And ULM. Yeah. And. I wasn't going to say it. And they now beat 8-0 eight, eight Air Force. Air Force goes to 8-1. and one. However, Air Force is still 5-0 and oh in conference. Which means they're still in the driver's seat for the Mountain West. Char- is there a, is there a way they still end up with the NY six bid? No, not with this loss. There's no way. This is uh, well. It would you yeah would need take some, some really. You strange, would need some. Yeah, they need you know. they need a Tulane loss. They need a loss. They need an SMU implosion. Yeah, there's going to be it, it'd be a tough path. They, if they can still win the Mountain West. They, they may have an outside shot, but they can't lose anymore. Charlotte thirty three, Tulsa twenty six. In overtime, we had so many overtime games. Also, this week, it felt like every like there were like six overtime yeah, games all, all at once, and it was it was nuts. Yeah. Uh, best part about this is that Biff comes in wearing a polo shirt. Things aren't going well, and then about had to have been in the second quarter, or whatever. He strips off the polo shirt into the cutoffs, and all of a sudden, Charlotte comes to life. Tulsa, oh my God, Tulsa! This you guys had this one in the hand, and then it just got away from you. The, they saw Biff's arms, and then they were like, "We can't do this." The best part also was that the Biff boogie. Biff gets into the locker room and starts dancing, and it's great. Not the best dance I've seen this weekend, though, by a big dude. We'll get to Brett's dance in a little bit. <laughs> Brett Bielema fucking boogie down. Tulane thirteen, East Carolina ten. Kamish, when are they going to find out? Because they're fucking around an awful lot. <laughs> this this was, this uh, was a. Tulane fuck around. Dude, I am terrified. I was terrified for this game. Uh, ECU brought out like special unis and, and like special. It was like Armed Forces Day. Their their logo, oh, yeah. like the American flag, like it, it, on the field. They have like these sweet like purple. Oh, that was the something. purple like was, like oh, yeah. script jersey. I'm like, oh no, this is like all setting up for like Tulane to fall flat. Tulane f- fell flat. Down ten nothing, like right out the gate, and I'm like, oh no! I turned off the game. I, I can't watch Tulane this year. Like I feel like I'm a jinx for Tulane. Um, as soon as I turn off the game, Tulane wakes up. Uh, it's it's ten ten at halftime. 
and then it just and then it just cruises just there for so, so long. long. And then at the end of the game, Tulane does a long drive. They get a field goal. Uh, Valentino Ambrosio makes one. And then at the end of the game, hey. they burn the, the drive. The, the drive just burned the rest of the clock. Like I, 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 I'm trying to figure out how long this was. Hold on. But the final drive. They just held the ball, and they didn't score. They just yep. held the ball. It was ridiculous on how long they held the ball, but, oh, my God, were they fucking around. 14 plays, 49 yards, 7 minutes and 17 seconds. That was the final You're drive right. to end the game. They ended They ended on ECU's 5-yard line. Willie Fritz just being like, fuck it, we're just going to hold on just, to it. Just I don't, hold on. We're not going to fuck around with ball. this. Uh, they converted a 4th and 1 on ECU's, like, 5. Uh, to just basically finish off that final uh, last bit and then kneeled it out. It, it, it was just like, why Tulane? I don't, I don't know what's going on with them. Uh, I don't know if they're, I, I don't know, but they, they've been fucking around and they, they may find out, which I mean, I don't know what the rest of their schedule looks like, but it, it doesn't matter what the rest of their schedule looks like, because no matter who's on it, they're going to play a close game. Oh, oh, yeah. Kamesh. Next week, next week is they're hosting Uh-oh. Tulsa, but in the last two, Ooh. they have to go to Florida Atlantic, and then the last game of the season they host UTSA. Ooh. Hey, if if Frank Harris Jr. is is healthy oh, for that, that could be a fun one. That's that gonna be a... that's gonna be really fun, actually. Man, if I could only go back to New Orleans for Thanksgiving, that'd be fun. I mean, I would love to attend that no, game. No, but I I know, but I those warrants just are gonna chase you out of there. I know you can't go back. It's fun. <laughs> This is most likely parking tickets, but okay. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's definitely a warrant for your uh, Mardi Gras comments. Oh, after, definitely after, after that. that earlier yeah, in the yeah, year. they're gonna let me back in there. After where I'm uh, go to you in a hat. Oh, Connor Stallions. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, Connor Stallions. How would you spell that? Like, like, <laughs> in Cajun. Okay. You're thinking too hard. Not, how how do you Cajunify Connor Stallions? Is that where we're going? Yeah, uh, I'm, my brain is going to start yeah, smoking it's, it's if I much. try and think of that. We are we're not going to talk about Arkansas LSU, but the best part, my favorite thing from that game, besides the, just the general wackiness, was that the, the ref. I it's it was like Daniel something, and the last name was very Cajun. It had like a silent X in it. Oh. And every LSU LSU fan was like, "That's our man, our man on the inside." And then after the game, we're like, "That oh, man, he's, he's he was against us." A <laughs> check bounced. Holy shit! He was actually Acadian oh God, the whole time. From, oh no, he's from Lafayette, <laughs> Illinois twenty-seven, Minnesota twenty-six. And that was Alabama LSU, not Arkansas LSU, as you said. Yes, oh, I'm okay. so sorry. Yeah, I mean, same same basic thing. All those big, all those SEC West blend together. Were. Yes. That's like I, like it's like listening to any of the main people talk about MAC teams. Ah, oh, they're all the same. Fuck it, us. Eh, all those fucking big SEC West teams. I don't know who they are. <laughs> they're all red. It's fine. Illinois twenty-seven, Minnesota twenty-six. Is Burt really ten and zero all time against yes. Minnesota? Oh god, <laughs> the Gophers oh, god. see Burt Bielma in their nightmares. We cannot defeat this man from his time at Wisconsin. Oh. And now his time at Illinois, ten and zero against the Gophers. This game was insane. This this was this was Big Ten West at its most fun. It was not because this was just like rocks like was running not, into no, each other. It was the I, I, the first half insane. Uh, so we're gonna call this one the Crockpot game, I guess. Uh, the Crockpot okay. was on high to start the game. Uh, it, it, it touchdown. Touchdown, 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 miss field goal, field goal, punt, and a half. That was the first half of a Big Ten West game. I love that all those drives were also like, like those drives were also six minutes. Are there, were there really only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dri- eight drives yes, in the first half? That's, that's so, that's that's so Big few. Ten West. That's so few. Uh, this, and one of those was just that's a kneel right. down. One was just a kneel down. Uh, Kevin, you always helpfully point, let us help us figure out who is meeting the Ferentz line in the Big Twelve, West, Big Ten West. Uh, yeah, so two teams exceeded it this week, and they were both in this <laughs> game. 
the the way this game ended, Gophers fans are so furious, which is the last couple drives of this Illinois Minnesota game was was nuts. All right. So Illinois fumbles, Minnesota gets a touchdown, they lead 26 21. The next drive, Illinois interception. So like, okay, you think the Gophers are okay, right? No, they go three and out and have to punt the ball back. Uh, six plays, 84 yards, touchdown, basically with like 30 seconds left. Illinois <laughs> takes the lead, 27-26. And then Minnesota, they have 20-some-odd uh, seconds to try to do something here. They go four plays on downs, gain no yards. That was it. The Gophers are like just furious. Gophers fans are furious. But Illinois fans, again, they just cannot beat Burt. I don't, I don't know what it is, but Southern Miss 24, ULM 7. So what did you do as Fred Flintstone? I, I went to uh, CBS to uh, get, get the boost shot. <laughs> yeah, but dabba do. Um, yeah, but dabba do. Jabba dabba do. Um, yeah. Episode title? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Episode title, episode title, Vaxxed? No, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Uh, oh, my God. The Pfizer episode. There we go. The, yeah, so uh, who are they going to pay as little as they pay Terry Bowden to coach you all up next year? Man, uh, Us. It probably. Look, look, this game started horrible for, for ULM. Yeah, it And did. it was just off the rail, and it was over. And, like, there was no hope. The rest of the time, it's just like the whole life just got sapped out of them. Uh, first drive, they threw an interception. Uh, then after that interception, one play touchdown, Southern Miss down seven nothing. Then ULM goes on a drive. I'm like, okay, cool. But then they miss the field goal, still down seven nothing. Uh, after they miss the field goal, uh, one play touchdown, Southern Miss fourteen nothing, eighty yard touchdown there. Uh, so they have Southern Miss has has two plays on offense on their past two drives, and one one is a thirty eight yard touchdown. The other is an 80 yard touchdown. Uh, Southern Miss, known for being a very explosive team, uh, is no, correct? No. No. Oh, no, and not also, really. Also, Southern okay. Miss's defense, one of the worst in all of FBS. Yeah, not known for being very stout. One of the not worst in all stout. of FBS shuts down ULM completely. You know, the, uh, after Southern Miss uh, got their second one play touchdown drive, uh, ULM, their their first play, uh, they threw an interception and gave it right back to Southern Miss. And that was it. That was the first quarter. I was, yeah, it was it was seventeen zero at the end of the and first, that, and then yeah. I mean, yeah. at least they didn't get shut out. So they need to stop doing those one play interception drives. But ULM, their only score was a one play, uh, sixty eight yard touchdown pass. That was it. A lot of just a whole bunch of one play fun there. If you if if you want to come in and tell Kamish that you're sorry about how his ULM season is going, consider joining our Discord <laughs> for five dollars a month. You can join our Patreon. You get access to our paywall subsec posts. You get access to our Discord where we have our weekly ratings debates. And we live chat throughout the games. And we come up with... It's where we make the sausage. Come make Sicko's sausage with us, people. So when next year, us as a committee, as a Discord, are hired to coach uh, ULM as the coaching staff. So Kamish is going to be the Dabo Swim- Swinney CEO head coach, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And then, uh, what, Kevin, you want special teams? What are we doing? I, I want to hmm. be I want to be O line coach because I feel like O line are my people. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that works for me. Uh, I think Beth gets strength and okay. conditioning. Though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Beth is definitely strength. Yeah. And conditioning. Uh, we also have our merch store at sickoscommittee dot org, which we're going to do a refresh soon and end up with some new designs for Black Friday coming up. Shout out to the Message Board Geniuses podcast. They go to the places that we refuse to go. They found someone on a Texas A and M board that said that they should hire Johnny Menzel as their head coach. I don't even know if it was ironic or not. We have our sub stack where we do our shit tracker. We also do our weekly sicko synopses. And lastly, do you need something for the holidays? That's a super soft licensed collegiate apparel. Go to home field apparel and use offer code. Yes. Ha ha ha. Yes. That's three haws for 15% off your first order. Or. You can also find the weekly Sicko shirt showdown for 25% off a very selective at this point set of shirts. We had a bunch at the beginning of the season and a lot of them are out now. This past week, we had a beautiful set for App State and Marshall, a, a Marshall shirt that I really love and may end up buying. Hopefully get in soon. 
But this week, we have Pitt and Syracuse for their Yankee Stadium game. Yeah. We're excited for we, that one. We, That's you know, again, uh, home field, we partner with them. So they, they give us uh, shared options, and we, we, got, we got two interesting shared options here for, for both. I really uh, like these. I'm so excited. I'm getting uh, this. Definitely. One. And then the other one is, uh, is interesting for pit fans. I'm, I'm just, they, they, they may think we were messing with them. I don't know. <laughs> Why would they I don't do know. That? Because you've done it in the past with a bunch of dino cat graphics and whatnot. Yeah. I'm the problem. It's, it's an awesome you. shirt though. I, I like it. <laughs> I, 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 I do. I, it's a great shirt. In overtime, Houston 25, Baylor 24. Cougs win it in overtime. Our friend Nick Pants, who is a on Twitter, who is a neighbor of mine and a Baylor fan, said no one wanted more of this game, especially not fans of either team. And that's that was the feeling going into overtime. I'm going to give game. a shout out to Dana for going for two in OT to not prolong it. Yes. Yeah. You know, Baylor tied it at the end to send it to OT. Uh, I just glad it ended quickly, and they got the two. And the Cougar Coaster, four and five, two games away from bowl eligibility. I don't know if it'll happen. I don't know their schedule, but uh, the Cougar Coaster is 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 quite entertaining. Um, I'm pretty sure I know why uh, Dana wanted to get out of there. It is because uh, McClellan County, which where we go, is is a dry mm. county. So I had a feeling he was just trying to exit there as quickly as possible. So, okay. Houston's remaining three games are the rest of the round Robin with Cincy and UCF and Oklahoma state. So they can beat the, the newly, the newly big 12 and they may get a bowl game. Their their cats are rough. Yeah. I I mean, can we rely on the Cougar coaster? No. We don't know no, what's going to happen. That's, yes, that's, that's, that's the fun, fun of the Cougar Coaster. Hawaii 27, Nevada 14. Hawaii wins on the mainland at, at 3 p.m. local or 3 p.m. Yeah. central. What a weird one. I I did, I did expected Nevada to play a lot better than this, especially after the last two yeah, weeks. Yeah, they didn't show up. And they got smoked. I, and I think, okay, so I think here's what it was. It was on the Team 1 app. Maybe, maybe it has not, it's not just on the islands. It has to be on the app. Mm. Yeah. So it was on the app. It, it was hard to get to. It was either Mountain West Network or the Team One Sports app. So if it's harder to get to the Hawaii game, uh, you know, provider wise, uh, better chance Hawaii wins the game. The commercials always, always were great on the Hawaii feed. It was like some electrical union and some dude setting from a green screen of American flag. It was great. Oh my God. Always great commercials. I wasn't dropping Hawaii facts this time. UCF 28, Cincinnati 26. UCF gets their first Big 12 win and a st- and stops the two point conversion to get for Cincinnati to come back for the tie. This feels like hazing at this point. <laughs> the Big 12 new members feels like hazing. But here's a, like Beth when she was on um uh, what's the podcast name? The Hope We're not all like Beth this. We're all not yeah. like this. Yes. Beth was on there talking about how it felt to be the West Virginia newcomer repeatedly for so many years. And now this year there are new people to haze. Yeah. And next year there's going to be even more people to okay. haze. Hashtag, hashtag big 12 is greater than 12, whatever their new logo says, yeah. which is really funny. It's like big 12 greater than 12. Ooh, I don't know about that. I mean, technically, yes, but it was, we've always been greater than 12. There we, that's what it was. Thank you. Which is factually untrue. That's, oh, we're going to get factual. Then a lot of these things are not going to work. Looking at you, Atlantic Coast Conference. <laughs> I love how none of them are just like, we're going to change the name. Fuck it. Fuck it. No, fuck, fuck it. it. We're, still, now. we're still the fucking same conference. We're the Big Ten. We got, we got 18 teams. I don't give a shit. If I may sickos on ice this real quick. Um, when the East Coast Hockey League merged with the West Coast Hockey League, they kept the name ECHL, but they just made it stand for nothing. The Every Coast Hockey League. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what that's what the ACC is going to do. They're not the Atlantic Coast Conference anymore. They're just the ACC. Okay. I mean, the last time we you know rebranded or came up with a new conference name, we just got the American Conference, so. which is awful like, because it also had the same. Yeah, name. the abbreviation <laughs> sucks because AAC sounds like ACC. It was awful. Ah. It sounds like Kathy's Conference. Ah. 
Ah. <laughs> that's, that's a reference for you folks that read the cat. That's right. You remember when they had comics in the paper and you would read them while you were wow. e- eating cereal? What's the paper? <laughs> exactly. I, mean, I, I think if we're if we're trying to name athletic conferences at this point, I think the naming convention is airlines, right? Because we already have an American athletic conference, a United athletic conference. We have a frontier. Bring back the SWAC. Do we have? Do we have yeah, a, I mean, we have a frontier. Like, <laughs> we do I have a frontier. I don't know if we had like a D two frontier conference. There is a frontier. There was a frontier yes. league. Or something. Here we go. That's yeah. no, a Pioneer league. league. Okay. Yeah, the frontier. Yeah, the frontier conference is an NAIA league. Okay, great. So well, maybe are, are we... maybe we should work backwards and found an airline then. <laughs> well, you could have a Delta conference. You could have. Are we renaming the CUSA to the Spirit Conference? <laughs> that also that feels correct. I think Spirit flies to most of those places too. Uh, not to get too far off, but M- Montana State University Northern in Havre, Montana, Haver, pronounced Haver. Thank you. Before someone yells at me, uh, their men's teams are called the Lights, and their women's teams are called the Skylights. <laughs> that works. Sure. Still, still not as bad as the Bears and the Sugar Bear- Bears, Central Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Arkansas Tech's called like the Wonder Boys and the Golden Suns, mm-hmm. if I recall correctly. Kamish, I need you to explain NC State twenty Miami six to me because I watched none of this game. And I'm I, I I watched the entire thing. It was you also watched all of Temple. I did. Navy. I told you I was going to do it. My internet <laughs> loved it. I know you out of spite I, you did it. I it's told fine. you I, I like watching it. that game. That was a great game too. It was a lot of fun. Temple's completely different, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Miami, North Carolina State, Miami basically just. It kept shooting themselves in the foot. It was ridiculous. They turned the ball over four times, um, all oh, at God. inopportune times. They could not pick up a fourth down to save their lives. Uh, they were four for 15 on third down. They were over two, over two on second down. NC State was just doing their NC State thing. They were waiting for you to make a mistake. Th- this game kind of finally broke open uh, in the fourth quarter uh, where – uh, Miami drove 12 plays, 72 yards uh, to get to like NC State's three yard line. And it was fourth and one on NC State's three. NC State stuffs them. At that point, NC State only had five offensive yards in the second half. Only had five. So this was 10 6 at the time, right? Miami's like, okay, yeah. I'm not going to kick the field goal, whatever. It, it, there's like 9.47 left in the game. Mario was like, let's go for it. Let's do it. We got to get a touchdown. We're down four. Field goal doesn't help. Uh, they get stuffed. They they run a running play, just blown up. So remember why I said NC State did not have but five offensive yards in all of the second yeah. half? Yeah. Then they just drove 97 fucking yards for a touchdown right after that. Nine, eight plays, 97 yards, uh, 400, four minutes and 44 seconds. Like, I don't know where this offense came from for NC State, but they did it. It was 17-6. And then, like, Van Dyke threw interception and interception again to end the game. It was just – I don't know if Van Dyke is hurt, like, playing through an injury. Like, he didn't seem – and, I mean, there were so many three and outs for Miami. Every time I looked at the screen, it was just like – it's third and 15. And the ball back, it's yeah. third and 15. They complete a ball for like seven yards. Then they got a punt. Uh, a lot of self-inflicted wounds. Just not great. Um, and, and that's what happened. They they, they just got NC stated. They got they got wolf packed. I, I'm, give me one second. I want to actually see what the EPA on this game was because I have a feeling it's going to be just a massacre. Holy shit. Uh, I'm going to drop it. <laughs> I'm going to drop a link to this in the discord because y'all need to see this is the progressive the cumulative epa chart for this game you'll notice the green line going very far down to a that is a let's see here negative 26 they are negative 30 total epa for miami jesus christ nc state was headed straight down the path with them and then i don't know what the hell happened they got that fourth down stop on the three yard line and then they they found 97 yards of offense out of nowhere when they only had five offensive yards in the second half. Between the like, cushions. NC State bowl eligible, NC State yep. bowl eligible and commish. Still a chance, Still a chance at my weird prediction that NC State would go 9-3. So that's very strange. 
Stanford 10, Wazoo 7. Wazoo, you doing okay? No. You, you, no. Are you okay? This is, this is bad. Stanford's playing the kind of football that they want to play. Not the kind that I think their coach wants to play currently, but this is what they're going to do, so it'll happen. Culturally, Stanford. Yes. The intellectual brutality, if you will. Although, I, it's not even that they're playing really good line play or anything. It was just... No one could really do anything in this no. game. Cam Ward for Washington State, 241, 241 yards, one TD, one interception. Like that's. Um, yeah. Wazoo ran the ball f- uh, 24 times for for four yards. Jeez. Not not the worst running display we'll, we will talk no, about today. I'm talking about you, Maryland. <laughs> Maryland, you done fucked up. Well, I mean, you know. Strap. Yeah, strap. <laughs> every I see strap and I just think about every time I go to my kid's daycare and on the, the door. Somebody of has class, strap. Somebody strap. has strap. It is cold in flu season. It is. Get your flu mm. shots, kids. Oh my my partner has uh, you might have heard it in the background. My partner has a really bad flu no. right now. Uh, oh, it's not strap. Okay. Doesn't appear to be. On cue, I don't know if you hear that. On cue they coughed I, really cool. loudly in the it. room. No. Oh, dang. App State 31, Marshall 9 in our Sicko Shirt Showdown of the Week. App State just fucking rolled. Like, these are two teams where I look at their their current standings, and it's very different than what I thought they would, like, like mentally where I think they're at. Because I was like, Marshall's having a great year. They're 4-5, and 1-4 and four in the Sun Belt. And yeah, then I, was I like, guess App I State- haven't really paid too much attention to them since conference play started, because they're still good in my head, too. Right, and- same problem. And then like, oh, App State, they've been real shit, right? No, man, they're five and four, three and two in the Sun Belt. Like, that's not great, but not what they want, but still. Dude, Marshall Marshall has done the Syracuse. Uh yes. they yep. they did they they won their first four games. They they beat they beat Virginia Tech. Right? Yes. That looks in hindsight, that looks weird. Then they lost to NC State by seven on the CW. They they haven't won a game since then. They've been cursed. Oh, they got it's the, the CW, CW has, uh, has gotten them. The uh, the Wolf Pack bit them on the CW, and they've been cursed. West Virginia thirty seven, BYU seven. We'll let Beth talk about this li- next later on. This it's week. a Mountaineer machine. But holy shit! Like West Virginia had this game in hand at one point. Beth sends us a message because it, it, uh, Mountaineer Stadium peeled. Uh, the only thing that works is Discord, and it only seems to be one of our private chats that works. So I just get messages from her yeah, throughout the game, great. and she she was sad that like a BYU tried to kick a sad field goal and it didn't go in. She was like, "This just feels sad, guys." Apparently, though, BYU traveled well, and we're happy to sing "Country Roads" with West Virginia. So I'm glad they enjoyed it. New Mexico State 13, Mitsu 7. New Mexico State is for real, honest to God, bowl eligible now. But this game was not a comfortable one, Kamish, was no, it? No, I mean, my God, New Mexico State. Like, why did you make this so hard on yourself? <laughs> like, they threw... It was... Everything, everything looked they, different. They threw an interception in the end zone. They they got a touchdown. They missed a field goal. And they were dominating Mitsu the entire first half. And then they, they ended up one giant big play. It's tied 7-7. They get a field goal to go up 10-7 at half. They they make it 13-7, but they cannot extend the lead whatsoever. They can't do it. And so they're only up six, and Mitsu starts to march. The very last drive, they have to survive a throw into the end zone with three seconds left. The Aggies do survive it. They defend it. No flags. Uh, and they get the seven wins, and they're bowl eligible. Uh, in back-to-back years for the first time since 1959 and 1960. Good for you. It's insane. Jerry And and Jerry Kill pulls in more That's of a right. bonus. He gets an extra, he gets 25K, I think, for the it bowl, was, 20K for it making, was, for, for getting seven it was wins. So, it was so torturous to this. They had a packed house. It was like homecoming. It was it was nuts. It was a good crowd. Um, I mean, great weather and everything. They were having a good time, so... I'm glad everybody in Las Cruces had a good time with that one, and they were able to get out, get away with the win. Whew. Very. I mean, New Mexico State has a le- legitimate shot at being in the Conference USA it, Championship. It, they got a chance. Yeah. They could be the one that uh, 
if they beat the they could be the one that sets up Air Force for the uh, NY6. And if that, if New Mexico State gets Air Force into the NY6, I will be proud Dude, to be in there. We got an email this morning at 10:30 uh, a.m. to our normal Gmail account uh, for the committee, and it just says. New Mexico, uh, the subject is New Mexico State can win 10 games. This is not a drill. And then in the content <laughs> message of the email, it says, I repeat, New Mexico State can win 10 <laughs> games. This is not a drill. Thank you for emailing us that. That was great. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> Michigan State 20, Nebraska 17. I didn't watch a ton of this one, but Nebraska fans online were big mad about it. Yeah, there's some sort of some sort of ref situation uh that happened. I don't know what happened. Uh I'm trying to figure out what occurred. They had chances to still win it even without the the, yes. the ref calls. I mean, they 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 just could not put it pull it away. Like they fumbled, uh they missed a field goal. I mean, they just you know, they just could not get it done. To, to get them over the hump. I mean, they're five and four. Congrats, Michigan State, on getting your first conference win um, this yeah. season. So shout out, shout out, shout out to some folks in the in the Big Ten that were actually doing stuff like that this week. Speaking of big wins in the Big Ten, Indiana twenty, Wisconsin fourteen right. in Bloomington. What the fuck? What the, this? Hey. This makes no goddamn oh. sense. I was sincerely on the hoping you could explain this to me because I, I was off the grid at this point and saw none of this game. Indiana, Indiana was cooking. Indiana was on fire in the first half. It was incredible. Uh, they looked as good as they did against Penn they State. Almost, they almost had like a, a shit win too. Uh, if, if you look at the, the, the breakdown there, it was 17-7 at half. Uh, Wisconsin oh, yeah. just could not convert anything. I don't know what was going on. Wisconsin was seven for sixteen, and they were zero for three on fourth downs. They couldn't convert anything on fourth downs. Keep in mind, Wisconsin has a backup quarterback uh, since Mordecai is out with the injury. So, uh, you know, first road trip for a backup quarterback, tough. But really, Indiana pulled it, pulled out the victory. Uh, this was they were just hanging on by a thread. Uh, they got that field goal hit late to make it a six point game. And then Wisconsin had a chance to do something, but then they fumbled it away and, and, and the Hoosiers uh, fell on the ball. So that vaunted Hoosier defense. I believe we're projected right now to be short of six and six teams to fill out the bowls. So Indiana could go bowling at five and seven. It's off the the top. We got to check that out, but maybe they let James Madison and Jack state do something. JMU would fill before five and seven teams did. I do that. Uh, yeah, I believe yeah, so. I yeah. think so. No quote. No quote. Yeah, we don't know if the NCAA is going to be part of jerk. their probation. Kamish, yeah. tell me about Temple 32, Navy Ooh, 18. Buddy. What a what a game. Temple domination. They are so much better with EJ Warner as at quarterback. Uh, it, they, are, they are an entire entire team enti- with EJ Warner as quarterback. They were up 17 nothing at halftime. And I'm like, okay, let's see how it goes. And then Navy gets a touchdown out of nowhere. It's 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 17-8. I'm like, okay. Then Navy gets another touchdown. It's 17-15. Oh, Temple, don't blow it. But then on the very next drive, EJ Warner just leads Temple down, like no problem, touchdown, uh, gets that separation. And it was just, they were able to do it. uh, Just 402 passing yards, four touchdowns, two INTs. um, The son of Kurt Warner, EJ Warner. They are so much better with EJ. It is It is incredible. But I mean, you know, most teams are better with their starting quarterback. You would think, right? Surprise! Surprise. Right? Well, not not every team, but yeah, most yes, teams. Sure. Oregon State twenty six, Colorado nineteen. Dion, I'm glad you decided to swap out your excellent offensive coordinator for this. That was a choice. This was a pretty good game for Oregon State, minus one incredibly bad decision the 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 Oregon State coach Jonathan Jonathan Smith um this is two weeks in a row that he's doing like something silly with special teams like there's a, this confounding special teams decision and I I don't know what they're doing does Oregon State even have a special teams coach I don't think we got that question for them but Colorado it, they're up 20 to three I'm sorry Oregon State is up 20 to three and 
they kicked the extra point to make it 21-3. Uh, but Colorado's offsides. So it moves the ball closer to the one-yard line. So guess what Jonathan Smith wants to do? Let's go for two now. Let's make it 22-3 instead, right? Um, no. Mm-hmm. Snap over DJ DJ's head. <laughs> Goes on the ground or whatever, and Colorado returns it for for two. So we get the weird score of 20-5. to five. Just due to that, if he would have just kicked the extra point here, the final score would have been 27-17. But no, we got 26-19. Just ridiculous. Dion, a little bit of a clock commander here at the end, but this was kind of like weird clock commandery. So there's like, he has one timeout left and there's 43 seconds left after like they try to uh, just burn the clock. So you could call the timeout, uh, but then they still got to run around for like, like two or three seconds and then go down and then the clock will just drain. So Dion doesn't take the timeout. And so they drain the clock all the way down to like three seconds. And then he calls the timeout. And so basically all, all Oregon state has to do is just, just kneel. And that was it. It was just like a useless timeout. I don't know why Dion took it. He had the weird one. At, he had the weird clock commander issue at the end of the yeah. first half too. I don't know where, what's going on. Yeah. You know, they got the ball deep in their own yeah, territory. At, you know, with 30 something seconds left in the clock and they threw a couple passes and had to punt and then Oregon State, you know, they had a short punt and Oregon State, you know, immediately threw a touchdown pass and they went in, you know, 14-3 instead of 7-3 and he gave a very interesting, you know, he gave a very honest uh, halftime interview about it. You know, I've never seen them interview the losing coach at halftime instead of the winning coach but it was interesting where he was like yeah i messed up like we should have just knelt that out and gone to half <laughs> down four i mean they'll but, they'll interview Dion any chance they can they, they oh know, i know they will they know what the draw yeah. is i yeah. i just want to shout out colorado because when it comes to like coaching openings or like coordinator openings right like anytime it happens their names will throw out right like if a team was looking to replace their offensive coordinator, right? Like we might have shouted out, say, like Brian Ferentz, or you know, yeah. there are like a number of names, kind of maybe meme names we could go through, right? Like maybe like shout out Houston Nutt or something. Yeah. I I don't know how long it would have taken us, just like as a joke, if we were just shouting out people connected to football to get to Pat Shermer. Oh, like like like, like th- this was like wow, he's there. Mm-hmm. That is such a weird, like you have the Bron- like the Broncos, the bad Broncos offensive coordinator, a former New York Giants head coach, not a great one. And he's now your, you know, offensive analyst who's calling plays now. Yeah. Giants and Browns head coach, which is oh, I a forgot combo about the, there. I forgot about you know, I, I really got him confused because when they said Pat Shermer this week in my head, it was, it was Mike Sherman. Uh, so I, I got Mike Sher- I thought it was. I was like, why does he have Mike Sherman on his staff? I was like, why does he want the old, like, you know, uh, A&M, uh, you know, Packers, th- like, head coach? Like, why? Why? I don't know. The one-year head coach of the Montreal Alouettes, Mike Mike Sherman. I have no idea why I got Pat Sh- Sherman and Mike Sherman confused. That's I'm, just, what- <laughs> I- I'm very happy. I think, I, think, I think Sean Lewis is going to have a great job next year. I don't think it's going to be in Colorado. Uh, I mean, I kind of figured that anyway. I mean, he left Kent State to go be the coordinator, and this feel which is ar- which is already a weird. Well, move. no, I feel Nowadays. like now it's almost like if you're a, a G five head coach, you have to do a one year or two year internship at a P five school before they will now give you the keys to a P five school. Hate that shit. Yeah, it shit. it is. You know, you used to be able to jump like FCS to like. G5, no problem. Now you got to like make extra stops, which is ridiculous. But that's what I feel like he had to do. But I, I don't know. It, it, he just wanted to make a change. That's what Coach Prime said. I mean, that's like, and it's Kent State. Like that, we've talked about Kent State's, you know, feeling like they're stuck in neutral for the entire life of their program. But yeah, I Sean Lewis has been doing great. I, I hope to see, you know, I hope that he gets what he needs once next year. 
and I hope that uh, someone protects Shador Sanders from. Uh, don't worry. The blitz every sing- every they're single blitz because they're yeah. gonna get an offensive line. That's they're gonna get an offensive. line. Dion said so. Said. Indianapolis Colt. Shador Sanders. Jesus Christ, just someone protect him, please. I like watching him play. Just someone protect him. Utah State 32, San Diego State 24 in two OTs. No, one OT. This was a single OT over time. No, it was two. It was two uh, OTs. Utah State two. has just two points. So okay, yeah, this went to OT. OT um, and I, I, for a moment, I forgot the Utah State football team followed us. Uh, because, <laughs> you because, said, because you said some glib no, thing like, I was like, are they going to respond? Like, and then, like, like yes. I was like, can Utah State answer? And then, like, Utah State just said yes. Like the account yes. said, yes. I was like, all right, they answered. <laughs> We're going to double overtime. And it's like, because <laughs> San Diego State went first, they scored a touchdown, and Utah State like immediately answered, along with their social media account immediately answering us. <laughs> it was, I love this stuff. It's, it's just so weird running this account and doing the podcast now, because it's just like, <laughs> what is, I still don't know, like, what is happening? Like, why? Okay, hey. Hey, Kirk Herbs refollows us. I down know. <laughs> the hell, we got Kirk now. I think we have all. I think we have all. Of I, game we do now. because that reached was the first. Our, our graphic it ended did, up on yeah. game day again. Yeah. I think we did. Uh, we highlighted something wrong on that graphic too. I think so. it was the it was the uh, Nebraska yeah. Michigan State game, which ended up happening yeah, how it, it should. It so, Western Kentucky twenty-one, UTEP thirteen. UTEP this ain't it this year. I mean, uh, the Hilltoppers struggled like the first half of this game was they went into half three zero utep league. i know the hilltoppers struggled to team. top eight hand job hill but they got to win i like how you thought oh, about God. it for a second i just i do you do you think do you think big red is a top is he the hilltop no Are no one's gonna, bite, I'm gonna, I'm gonna no gonna bite this no one's gonna bite, fuck, fucking I, I was no. thinking I, no, i've been thinking about it and logistically it's problematic there um i'm just trying to say it whatever i can so that arthur ends Arthur, up arthur's this. gonna cut it oh <laughs> i have to man i have to start talking i have to start being better about blending in my conversation so arthur can't cut clean <laughs> utsa 37 north texas 29 this was actually a really great game this was a, like a thousand yards per team i by a thousand i mean uh, utsa had 420 north texas had 459 North Texas can't stop a thing, but they're scoring like crazy. It's the Cal thing, so who cares? Or the USC thing, I guess. U- uh, UTSA with Frank Harris Jr. is just a very yeah, good team. I mean, they're they're undefeated in the American. Uh, North Texas, three and six, one and four in the American, and dead last in FBS in total defense. Oh, yeah, they're just, it, they, they're stopping nothing. nothing. Coastal 28, Old Dominion 24. Coastal is bowl eligible with this in, and their backup QB, Ethan Vasco, acquitted himself rather well in this game. It was a little spicy towards the end, but... I mean, well. anything spicy with ODU, like, they're, they're going to find a way to make a game interesting. ODU will will find that way. Ole Miss 38, Texas A&M 35. Y'all, this was so stupid. <laughs> it's just as stupid <laughs> as I needed it to be. The the best, the best personal foul, most blatant oh, God. personal foul I've ever seen. Was Jesus. was an A and M dude just uppercutting someone's nuts? Just like I loved the the screenshot of I think it was four yeah, of us. We were just, oh yeah, we were all high. all on the guy like doing the uh, tiger uppercut on the dude's nuts. Good God! <laughs> yeah, he he, tar- yeah, he targeted Christ. it. Like like I said, it was the it was the follow up VAT system. He was just like mm, nuts, bang, hundred percent. This is why you wear a cup. Why you wear a cup? This this game ended on a missed field goal because of course it did. It was. Just- I don't know if it was tipped or not. It kind of looked like it was because uh, it fell a little short. Yeah. And just looking at the replays, I think there may have been like like a hand on it a little bit. I tried to Zapruder film it. It it kind of looked like it hit somebody's hand, which is good. You know, it's a block field goal win. I don't know if they, did they rule it as a block or a miss. We know. I think I missed. I think I believe it was a okay. spell double check. Keep talking. No, but I mean, this was, this, this game was stupid. Uh, this was, it was ridiculous. It was kind of like who the last team that has the ball is going to win. Uh, in the second half, like nobody could stop 
anybody. It was great. It was it was ridiculous. It was just people were making crazy contested catches. It was a lot of fun. And you kind of just knew that it was going to come down to the end. And, and, and it did. And I was like, this is definitely going to overtime. And, you know, I was wrong. <laughs> the kick was amazing. Your prediction from the beginning of the season is still is. alive, though. But so that one step of the prediction, it, it has been completed. Yeah. But the old man- they have it. They have it. They have it listed as blocked. Okay. So they did block it. So they did get a piece of it. All right. It was a long kick, and I mean, it, it seemed like it hit somebody's like, like index, not index finger, but like the ring finger and the pinky a little bit, and that kind of, you know. So I count it as a block, and you know, Ole Miss, um, you know, trolling uh, Texas A&M on social media, which it, with like that weird video it was nuts. It was great. Mm-hmm. Speaking. That's- Arizona, Arizona 27, UCLA 10. Congrats, UCLA. Nothing that happens in Arizona counts late at night, so this game did not happen. The fish tank is absolutely on fire. That's right. The fish tank is bowl eligible. They are. And, ranked. and ranked. And ranked. I have a question. So Gronk was there the whole time, and they kept like sh- flashing to Gronk, who was wearing like a, a non-numbered Arizona basketball jersey, which is strange, period. But is Gronk like the real life Spuds McKenzie or like Slurms McKenzie? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Uh, but if you guys don't know, Spuds McKenzie was an advertising dog for but, Bud I think it was Light. Bud I Light, yeah, yeah. And uh, he, I remember Spuds he McKenzie. Made, he, made, he was Canadian coach. He made drinking seem very. He cool. did because he was just a party dog, and that's all he did. And Slurms McKenzie was just, you know, from Futurama. If if you. you that's right. Version. And Arthur wants to know was was the Gronk there? He he was there in the fish tank. He was conducting yes. the band at one point. Sure, that goes well. Bear down, Arizona. Another weird <laughs> one was Arkansas thirty nine, Florida thirty six in overtime. So good. Arkansas was up fourteen zero in the first four yeah. minutes. Like it, this thing blew up so fast, and it took Florida the whole first quarter just to get it back to neutral. And then there was the best picture of the weekend. Let me find it. The Surrender Gator. I mean, this this game was was insane. The best picture of the weekend was the the victory graphic from this yes. game, but oh, the 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 the, the, <laughs> the dude like kicking a gator in the, the throat. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I did bevel that one. I can't that find it right away. Keep talking. Keep talking. No, but this game was nuts. I think Florida had a kick to win and they missed it. And they did. They, they missed the field goal to win. And then they made the field goal in OT. But then <laughs> there's a surrender. The is so good. Uh, but yeah, the last like possessions of this game was just insane. It was it was just so much stuff happening in this window. It was it, it, <laughs> insane. Florida, Florida fans are all just like, nah, our team fucking sucks. I hate I this. I hate this. It sucks. Ugly oh. uniforms on Florida. All this black. Game, by that the was way. part of it. Those, those, those blacks. God. This is what happens when you fuck around with classic uniforms, Florida. In the cockadoodle duel, South Carolina 38, Jacksonville State 28. Jacksonville State made this a game the whole time oh until the fourth God. quarter. It was, it was right yeah. there. South Carolina fans were just hating every moment right. of this. Like, why do we, why the fuck do we schedule this? This is so stupid. So stupid. I, fucking I hate, hate this. this. We can't even beat Jacksonville state. Uh, yeah, it was 28, 28 at one point. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, oh, I think right. Jacksonville state had a 28, 21 lead. And I'm sure Rich Rod was having fun. Yeah, they were, they were ahead. Of, they were ahead. Yeah. Of it point, was yes. in the second half. It was nuts. And then we got the, the name cockadoodle duel mentioned at full cast off the dark, which is awesome. We pushed that I've so already, hard during the I've game. I was like, thank, every- uh, thank my wife for coming up with that one. So, think, please do. Louisville thirty four, Virginia Tech three. Of the Cincy Louisville Wisconsin coach swap triangle, Louisville got the best into this deal. Yeah, yeah. By a, by, by a fucking long shot. Jeff Brom at Louisville was the correct choice. Well, I mean, here. like Louisville, basically, they got their they got they their upgraded. favorite son. They they brought him back home, and then like, like you know. <laughs> since he got sad and they didn't have to pay Satterfield to no. leave. Yes. That was, that was the no. best part. Cause they, yeah, it, Lou, that I, people, I mean, I remember for so long 
Satterfield was like, I fucking hate this job. And Louisville's like, I fucking hate you and too. They, 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 couldn't, they just couldn't leave each other. Then finally, since he did that, did their rival a favor. Unreal. Yeah. And they hate it. I, like, they, they, this was. And then they played a bowl game. Yeah, that, that, was, that bowl was, game yeah. that he didn't coach for. At Fenway? Was it was that, a Fenway was Bowl, Fenway? yes. Yes. Because we were talking because he should be on top of the green right. monster. He should be on top of the green monster. That's right. I wanted him on top of the green monster. Just pacing back and forth. James Madison, 42. Georgia State, 14. JMU is scary as hell yet again. They did not play with their food this week. They just fucking ate it. And this was at Georgia State. My One of my favorite games of the weekend. SMU, 36. Rice, 31. This is exactly what I wanted Rice to do. And they did it without JT Daniels for most of the game because he went yeah. out. And they gave SMU hell for four quarters. And that's exactly what I wanted them Spicy to do. Spicy rice. They were wearing their beautiful helmets with the with like the Art Deco owl on it. And this was great. They uh, SMU wins the Mayor's Cup, which is the trophy for this game. This is going to be a, no longer a conference game anymore, so who knows when they're going to play it next. Whatever. Fuck it. Don't care. But this is exactly what I wanted Rice to do. Rice needs two more games to be bowl eligible. And they have UTSA, Charlotte, and Florida Atlantic. They can get two of those. They can get two, I believe. I believe in you, Rice. Washington 52, USC 42. We already talked about most of this, but this is the game that got the Grink fired. If you watched Iowa Northwestern <laughs> and did not, did not take a breather going into this one, then you got the bends. This is what happens when you surface too fast. Because, <laughs> holy shit, this game, at some point, the defense is just turned off. Like, at the beginning, it was like they were trying to play defense. But Washington has a 28-point second quarter, and defense just drops everywhere. At some point, this was the epitome of, this game is going too fast. Like, this game is scoring too fast. You left the other team too much time. Because, oh my god, yes, this game. This was a lot of fun. FAU 42, UAB 45. UAB needs to win two of their last, or sorry, needs to win three of their last three to make a bowl game. And it is Navy, Temple, and North Texas. Nope. I don't think so. Like that's, that. I don't think that UAB is going to make a bowl this year. And I, no, they, they could do that. Like, None of those teams are so good that you'd say like, oh, that's not doable. Like it's the AAC, right? I mean, this year there's a lot of teams that are relatively inconsistent. I mean, you saw this in but, this game. But is UAB going to be consistent? consistent? But is UAB going to be consistent for three weeks? I mean, you flip a coin three times, right? There's some percentage of the time they all come up heads. Twelve and a half percent. Someone check me there. Yeah, it's mathematically possible. Yeah, this this one was part of the American Points Fest in the afternoon. It was nuts. Yeah, I don't know what's going like on in this game. It was points. insane. It was nuts. Yeah, well, we can talk about if U of E makes a bowl or not on the next show. Arkansas State 37, Louisiana 17. Arkansas State's almost bowl eligible. And again, I have no clue how this happened. Um, like, this is just... Yeah. Well, you all them helped. Yeah. 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 I mean, it wasn't just y'all. No. But- like this was a team that was we thought we're gonna was gonna be at the very bottom of the Sun Belt. Yeah, I don't. Not. I don't know what happened. Uh, also, the Cajuns quarterback broke a leg, fibula, I think. Ooh, uh, oh, so shit. they base in the first half, so that kind of just sank their hopes for the rest of the game. Not ideal. Hey, playing 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 quarterback is easy. Just call some dude up who's never taken a snap before. Teach him the snaps yeah. right before the game. Don't tell him the names of your. Don't players. tell him the names of your players. You could beat the Atlanta Falcons. Did you see the video of them practicing the Cajuns on the yeah, sideline? Just. He didn't know the Shout cadences. out Josh Jobs uh, for, for beating the Atlanta Falcons. Just want to shout out. I think it was uh, Victoria Zeller on, on Twitter that said, uh, Josh Dobbs seems to do this once a year where he gets just dropped into a new situation with no weapons and no practice and just has to manage. Not a bad job. Memphis, 59. South Florida, 50. The other part of the American Points Fest. Oh, God. It was, it was like... I, I don't know what happened. It was just Jesus Christ. There's so many points. They just did not stop. It, it was it was twenty eight. Uh, I was like thirty five, twenty eight at halftime. 
South Florida was able to take a lead in the third quarter, uh, but then Memphis was able to pull away in the fourth quarter. It was just nuts. A pleasure to watch. All the points were in Memphis, and I was just like, hey, if you wanted some points, just basically drive south down I-55 from Chicago. <laughs> Go to Memphis. All the points yep. are there. They're not at Wrigley. Yeah, that ki- the, those two American games kicked off at the same time as the Iowa game. UNLV 56, New Mexico 14. UNLV continues their rampage through the parts of the Mountain West. Uh, best part about this game was the, you know, the, Me- the New Mexico scoreboard, which said, welcome to Connor Stallions, probably. And they're down 49 at yes, this point. Yes, they were down 56 to 7. And they put that on there with 10 minutes and 31 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Find joy where you can find right. it. Shout out, Lobos. Do you think there was a discussion at any point? Like, that that was probably pre-programmed before the game. Do you think when they went down 40, they were like, should we take that out of the out of the rotation or no? Nah. At that, at that point, mm-hmm. whatever, man. Who cares? Texas State 45, Georgia Southern 24. Bowl eligible bob- Bobcats. Eat them up, baby. Uh, this was, I've said that before, but bowl, Texas State has been bowl eligible twice at this point, 2013 and 2014, but were not selected. Yeah. In 2014, they were 7-5 and five and didn't get into a bowl, which seems insane nowadays in fact i think nowadays you have to pick seven and five teams before you pick six and six but don't quote me on that that may not be true no not true okay for some reason i thought that was the case but it's not this the best part about this was that gj kenny and the president of texas state said they would jump into the san marcus river or no it's not the san marcus river it was the river the water i believe it's the san marcus river or is it it's not the guadalupe no, whatever I... it is uh they they jumped in and they had they had towels that were already made that was like bowl eligible bobcats. This was great, good for them, especially after last week where they lost homecoming to Troy. I mean, also good on them for getting bowl eligible after making those towels. I mean, yeah. I mean, how like look? I'm glad I'm glad that they got to use the towels. Nothing would be worse than being like, you know, the next coach finds the towels in the box that was never opened. Bowl bowl, bowl towels, towels never used. Never That's used. right. <laughs> Fresno, There's our show title. Fresno State 37, Boise State 30. Fresno State wins the milk can and is still in the driver's seat for the Mountain West. It was a good game. It was. Fun. Kansas 28, Iowa State 21. The mean bean machine moves on. At some point, Kansas is going to need Jalen Daniels back. I mean, I like, mean Bean got, got banged up in this game, too. He did. And I thought he was out for the rest, so, but he was able to tough tough it out. I, Iowa State gave him hell. This was a night game in, in Ames, and I did not believe it was going to be this close. I think, Kamish, you argued that it would be, and you were correct. I, I love the elite Kansas trolling when they colored the bridge Kansas colors, the pedestrian bridge, and they said they won. Mm-hmm. So it's just <laughs> <laughs> oh, they taunted him with the Iowa State pedestrian bridge. Lovely. It, it would have been worse if they put it on the, uh, the water treatment Ooh, plant. Don't do that. Don't that do that. That would have been too, too far. Too far. Auburn 31, Vandy 15, because of course, sure, why the sure. fuck not? That's weird. Good Kentucky 24, Mississippi State 3. Only interesting because, Kamish, tell us about uh, the Yeah, Mississippi State's only scoring drive. 20 plays, 88 yards, 12 minutes and 29 seconds for a field goal. That's all they had, baby. That was, that was all the and offense. That was in the, the second game. quarter, and they, were, and, they were, and they were done after that. They went to sleep. Bull. How did Kentucky still manage to score 14 points in the second quarter after all that time was taken away? Oh, it it, it, it lapsed on. from the first to the second quarter. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, the, the the interesting here is Kentucky is bull eligible, which I believe means Mark Stoops once again gets a one-year extension on his contract. Yep. They're, they're going to entomb him there. Yeah, the, the Mississippi State uh, drive started with six minutes and 20 seconds left in the first quarter and it there ended with eight minutes and 51 seconds left it with a 25 yard field goal. Good. Mike Leach is just spinning in his grave right There's now. Mike Leach. What have Sorry. you done to, what have you done to my offense? <laughs> Clemson 31, Notre Dame 23. Tyler from Spartanburg had to be the a plan. It was a setup. I'm now, this is the conspiracy that I'm now it was a setup. in on. This is my, Q, this it was is my all Q a and setup. On. Uh, he, he, was, he was a crisis actor That's for right. the bulletin board. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's like, we're, we're, you know, how do we avoid talking about we're four and four? Let's have a fake person come onto a radio call in show. 
get Dabo all worked up, have that just be the headlines and nobody talking about four and four, talking about just by Tyler from Spartanburg, getting all those votes in the Sick House Committee poll. Then we, we've we got to work. Yep. Dabo worked us. Kevin's like, whatever. I hate this game. <laughs> I, need, I need, I need, I God, I need. Kevin looks like sad Sam Hartman off, right now. <laughs> off, off, off season. He, Kevin does look a lot like Sam Hartman. I won't lie. How, how many how many ribs do you have, Kevin? Uh, all of them, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> I was going to say you could have said any of them because I actually don't know how many ribs. Are I, I I love that for the for the podcast listeners. All we're doing is you know that handsome man that everyone says is handsome and his whole thing is being handsome. Yeah, this guy looks like he him. does. <laughs> He does. I mean, I'm, you're right. I meant... like a champion here. <laughs> there were some. There were some. Man, there were some thirsty Sam Hartman signs. Uh, there have been thirsty Sam Hartman everything yeah. all season, but Ohio um... State thirty five, Rutgers sixteen. Kamish, I Rutgers did they they they, they hang them there they for a did. while. It was they. Oh, they were up nine seven at halftime due to three field goals, but then. Ohio State fans were, they were losing, losing, their, their, they were losing their shit, which is great. I love when that happens. They they just go insane. And then they made it 21-16 in the fourth. It's a five-point game. I'm like, let's go Rutgers. Do they have that magic Rutgers gear, that fourth quarter power that they've had? Uh, no, it didn't work out because um, Ohio State was just like, we're just going to throw the ball to Marvin Harrison Jr. And uh, I think that's unfair. That's, that's cheat cheating code. by Ohio State. Uh, that's not a real win. I think Rutgers also had like a fumble or a pick late in the game. No, that kind just, of we don't talk about it. it. Ohio State cheated. They threw the ball to Marvin Harrison Jr. It's not fair. Not fair to Rutgers. The we- the weirdest palindroming I've seen this year. Penn State 51, Maryland 15. That's a weird one. You don't see that palindrome very often. No. And, and the best part about this, Maryland ends the game with negative 49 rushing yards. Oof. Oh. That's good, and strep. That I watched. I watched the faces here, and several of us took physical damage on, from that. On, from that line. on sixteen attempts. Uh, this, this, with the rushing thing, it's a little weird because you know they count they sacks. Count the sacks but you know, I mean, Maryland seemed to be in, infected with strep. Maryland's top rusher rushed for four yards on one carry, and uh, apparently, Danger said that that four yards came in garbage time. Yep. Yeah, but like Talia Tagovailoa had at one point like a streak of at least fifteen completions or something like that. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. The passing game was working, and they got no points out of it. Like Maryland against Penn State is just a black hole. I, it's I I don't understand this. My my fam. I have family on both sides of this game, and I. Oh, acutely aware of it every year and this is just what it looks like it doesn't matter what maryland's doing it's just grim but i really need maryland to uh get off the slide next week and beat nebraska so that we can get the already bowl eligible maryland rutgers game at the end of the season because they're not beating michigan the week in between <laughs> Going on to FCS action in our next Sacred Heart beats Central Connecticut 31-24. Duquesne continues their uh, their unbeaten, sorry, undefeated. <laughs> Duquesne <laughs> continues their undefeated NEC run 34-26 over Wagner, although Wagner played them really close. This, uh, this does this does give Duquesne a share of the NEC title at least. The Dukes. Long Island University 29, St. Francis PA 28. And lastly, Massachusetts beats Merrimack 31 20. Thank you, UMass. Mish, what happened in the big sky? Um, so there was a couple of different bangers uh, here. Uh, Sac State at Montana. Uh, Sac State only won at Montana in, in 13 attempts. There was a little uh, issue where one Sac State player tackled a Montana, uh, Montana player um out of bounds you know just a little out of bounds not even like a penalty or anything like that like the montana player embellished it and then that led to some hurt feelings some jawing, some jawing and and like pushing and shoving on the sideline for a little bit on the fcs game a heated 
heated game. Um, so the the official was not having any of it. Um, so if you were dressed in a uniform for Montana or Sac State, uh, you got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. <laughs> Everybody got a penalty. So that means basically if anyone got one they more. ejected for the game. Yes. That's right. Everybody got a personal foul. <laughs> The the holder on the Sac State sideline just doing the the uh, fifty seven. What the fuck is he fucking me for? I was just, I was I was over here just talking. Uh, like after that occurred, uh, like Montana pulled away and, and won rather easily. Uh, it was just I've never seen just a ref was just like, oh no, all, all you fucking got penalties. Just don't fucking do it again, or you're ejected. Like the fed up father at the end of a road trip. Don't fucking move. <laughs> so, we had a hundred. We could have had a hundred other have, couplers. Could have. Uh, Weber State was at Idaho State. It was a, it was a good game. Uh, Weber pulled out, and then the uh, the Bengals of Idaho State tend to battle back and, and make it close, and they did again. But then Weber State pulled away, and and uh, Idaho State ran out of time. Weber State won thirty three twenty one. I'm looking up something really fast. Can I keep talking? Uh, the Western Illinois at Northern Iowa in the Unidome, uh, the Leatherneck, Leatherneck Lookout. Um, I turned this game onto the quad box and I immediately saw safety. So I was like, yes! So That's your power. Like, uh, the snap <laughs> to the Western Illinois punter was low and it was on the ground and the punter couldn't do anything with it and he was in the end zone. So he just like panicked. And he like slipped and just like like slipped outside the back of the end zone while holding the ball to just to give a safety. It, it, this <laughs> game was like out of reach for Western Illinois. It was like thirty nothing, like <laughs> at the very beginning of the second quarter. I just okay. I need to drop this this chart in the chat for you guys because I missed this game entirely. Uh-oh. We're going to have to at least mention this. This is Cal Poly and Eastern Washington. Yes. Eastern Washington 48, Cal Poly 13. Guys, look at that. Look at that box score real fast for me. Ooh. 2722. Uh. There were three safeties in that yep. game, all by, all scored by Cal Poly. Yep. It was uh, windy and rainy ah. in, in Cheney, Washington. Um, I had one safety alert for that game. Um, the other safety alert. <laughs> Because the the log snapper snapped it over the head. I don't know about the rest of it, and the big sky was not communicating with me to give me any more. <laughs> they gave me the first one. I wonder. I, I wonder they gave why. Me the first one. Redacted two, safeties. The last two were in the. Um, it, it, I see it in fourth the fourth quarter. quarter, but the it should be four in the fourth quarter according to that. But yeah, there was a lot of safeties. I don't. I, I, it doesn't say like what happened, so I'm assuming an. Well, we'll we'll, we'll, do, we'll dig, dig through, through this. this a little I, bit I need it. This could be a this could be a certified ESPN it box could be. moment. Uh, what else? We talked about. Oh, our beloved Sycamores also did not beat Youngstown State, which signs us up for two two games next week that are going to be FCS teams battling for their first win. We have first off Western Illinois and Indiana State. And then we have the Citadel and Western Carolina. No, sorry, Wofford. My bad. Not Western. Wofford. Both, both, uh, un- both, unwind. Windless. Windless. Think Windless. That's what I'm looking for. We didn't mention this because it's an SES game, but hey, Sam Houston got their first one, guys. They did. It was it was not, it was not pretty, pretty, and they almost they almost fucked it up. So Kansas State was ahead in this game for a while. A while. Yeah. Uh... But Kansas State actively trying to lose. <laughs> yeah, they, like they, they, it was it was rough. But Sam Houston does get their win. Uh, Kansas State is going to go winless in D one this year because their next game is against Virginia Lynchburg, I believe, which is a D two school. Uh, South Dakota State beat North Dakota State for the Dakota marker. I fucked that up because I claimed that North Dakota State was going to win. That was my bad. San Diego beats Presbyterian, having to go all the way from San Diego to South Carolina for that game. All non-scholarship players. All non-scholarship too. players. Uh, what was the Loras versus Simpson box score? Just click it. 
Okay, this is a D3 box score. Simpson 16, Loras 82. <laughs> okay. I love it. Also, want to shout out the Teal Tomcats in D3. Teal wins their third game this year, I believe. They do? Absolutely amazing. Um, the and, Simpson and Loras, yeah. Loras uh, box score, I just wanted to... Uh, just note that uh, Loras won um, 82-16. They had 883 yards of total offense. That's a lot. That's a it, lot, guys. Many that, that'll that'll do, do it. it. Um, yeah, Loras did not... Uh, I'm sorry, Simpson did not have any turnovers either. None. Ooh. They just lost 82-16. I do want to know about the Truck Series race because I saw everyone talking about it on the Too Fast account, and I... I haven't been able to read about what happened. I mean, they just couldn't stop crashing. This this race had 12 cautions for 77 laps. The race was originally scheduled for 150 laps. It ended up being 179 laps because of NASCAR's overtime rules. NASCAR has a rule, basically. They don't want the race to end under yellow. So when they hit overtime, all you have to do to end the race is get one full lap without crashing. And this race went to quadruple overtime because it took them four tries to get one lap in without crashing. So, yeah, it ended up being 43% of the race under caution. There was an 11-minute red flag. At one point, there was a crash, and they had two trucks stuck together. Like They had to figure out how to get them apart. Oh, I saw this. That was great. Um, they Yeah, 19 out of the 36 drivers in the race were involved in some sort of caution. And it was not like it was at the back either. Like the like they were driver, they were wrecked in the back, they were wrecked in the front. Uh, getting towards the end of this race, you know, you kind of thought because this was the championship race, you thought that the two top like championship contenders were going to race it out for the win, and it was going to be exciting. Like, nope, they wrecked once, and then they wrecked each other again in retaliation. So this <laughs> this race was, uh, I mean, a lot like other NASCAR drivers from other series were on Twitter, on other social media, it's posting about how embarrassed they were watching. And it lasted so long that Michael Waltrip was welcoming time zones into Saturday because it was going over midnight. I love it. And lastly, congrats on both eligibility to Duke, Boston College, Wyoming, UTSA, Coastal, Texas State, New Mexico State, West Virginia, Kentucky, NC State, and Arizona. Bear down. That's all we got for today, and we will see you guys for our preview episode later this week. Enjoy.